Shing. Hello, everyone. Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. This is Bandler Crooks. We're playing seven, 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 seven. I'm going to go with that. SC2VN. Apparently, it is an, an eSports dating sim uh, graphic novel. Uh, mm, I don't know. Let's get started. I've never done one of these, so this is going to be fun. Also, it's hot as balls in my room right now. And I can't open the window because there's a dog outside that won't stop barking. So, if I start sweating profusely, just just ignore it. It'll be fine. Let's begin. It's a visual novel about Starcraft in South Korea and the people who play it. Aw. Okay. How do I? Oh, okay. If you are new to esports or Starcraft, you can watch a short voice acted scene that will introduce you professional starcraft now i've seen i've seen starcraft a little bit i probably don't know enough about it to do this but we'll we'll find out it'll be funny or you can watch the scene later in the extras menu and get right into the action let's do uh i'll watch later i'm gonna call it seven because that just seems easier seven in seven you select the gender of the main character mock okay the choice will mostly impact how he or she appears. The story differences are minor. Now select the main character. Do you want to be a boy or a girl? Hmm. 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 Green eyes, blue eyes, brown hair. This kid actually looks quite a bit like me. But God, I love playing girls. Hmm. I guess I should be a boy because I can react to situations better as a boy. You know, I'm going to do that. I, I would preferably play this game as a girl, but I think for for recording's sake, I think it'd be better if I was a boy, because then, you know, I can just react more genuinely to situations because I've been in them. So let's go with a boy. Begin the story as the, as the male main character. Yes. Yes, I want to play as the male main character. Cool. And he kind of looks like me, so, I mean, why the heck not? There's a certain feeling that every Starcraft player gets before they lose. Most try to ignore it at first, as if the inevitable is just another challenge to fight through. Like their past mistakes don't count if they just try a little bit harder. It's a natural thing to believe otherwise. To believe otherwise contradicts the hours we spend practicing. Still, every player must eventually come to terms with a defeat. They have to queue up for another game. Or maybe that they flew across the world for nothing. I haven't met many players that can't take a loss in stride. That can take a loss in stride. It's painful. It's permanent. It's proof that your best isn't always enough. Long after my elimination, I remain at the PC with a blank look in my eye. Clicks shoot from my finger as if I leap from page to page. A tournament update mentions my defeat in passing, but no one acknowledges it. When my frustration fades, I'm left only with guilt. Oh god. I should have practiced harder. It was Clash Royale. That's a great game, by the way. Play it. I should have practiced harder. I consider sticking around to watch the final few games, but the knot in my stomach persuades me to avoid any more stress. People are nice enough to, to a foreigner with the heart to attempt a Star League qualifier, but without a win, I'm just one more in a long line of losers. My words are slurring really bad and I don't know why. Hundreds spend their best years chasing the esports dream. Only one in 50 makes it. This is for those that don't. Aw, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really cute. I'm gonna like it. I can tell I'm gonna like it. Every game of StarCraft begins the same. Gather resources, train a worker, construct a building, rally an army, defend a base, contest the map, turn something small and into something more. This game is punishing, it's stressful, it's draining, it builds you up and tears you down. 
It's not for everyone. It might not even be for me. How many more chances am I going to get? Was that my last? Oh, the feeling is back. Ha! Huh. Why am I still trying? I can't... Why can't I quit? My first... My fist rattles the desk and sends a plastic bottle onto the floor. With my chin in hand, I throw myself into the match replay. I force down a measured breath, losing a throwaway ladder game. Shouldn't bother a player of my rank. Scout denial and my poor control of the final fight gave my opponent the edge. In retrospect, my mistakes seem obvious. I toy with the conclusion that he was hacking before realizing that I just, I'm just making excuses. No, I should have been able to win that one. Despite the Grandmaster badge next to my handle, I find myself too anxious to queue up for another game. The loss at a Victory Star League qualifier earlier today isn't helping my mindset. I comb my tiny room with a look restless and I comb my tiny room with a look restless and unmotivated. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading. Sitting alone in a dark room for extended periods of times is incredibly depressing, a fact I learned when it became a significant part of my life. Only one thing is certain. I've got to get out of here. After double checking that my apartment's door is locked, I hustle down the stairs and onto the sidewalk. Light grows with each step towards the shining skyline. Catchy pop beats and posters of flawless models dominate street after street. Foot traffic is thick and impatient. Seol Tower, I'm gonna go with that. Seol Tower stands tall from the distant hilltop. But even the lingering excitement of life in a faraway place can't dread me out of my hopelessness. Dredge me. Sometimes, especially on days like this, I regret pursuing esports. It's a thought I've had more times than I'd care to admit since coming to South Korea. Even saying that, I know that I can't keep myself from competing. It's in my nature. And truth be told, this damn game is the only thing I'm good at. What is StarCraft? Some respond to that with an explanation on the game's mechanics or its storyline. There are other popular answers too, that it requires the dexterity of a pianist alongside the, st the strategist, the strategic thinking of a chess player. Maybe that's what StarCraft is to most people, but to, hun to the hundreds who carve out a living on it, StarCraft isn't such a simple thing. It's the embodiment of competition, a perfect playing field. No need for athletic genes, rabid parents, rabid, pa rabid parents? Tooting, tooting, tutting, tutting tutors, or expensive summer camps. You pick up the game on your own, you learn, you improve, you work. If you're good enough, you, be you can become a god. And if you fail, you stay a nobody. God, this is depressing. <laughs> I'm not building towards a long-term career. I'm friendless in a foreign country. I'm respected by no one. And if I don't qualify for the VSL next month, I'll be back home at square one. I'll be nothing. But hey, at least I play video games all day. Fair enough. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Are you completely sure you haven't forgotten anything? Do you have enough money for the cab when you land? Are you sure that the apartment got your money? Is your cell phone charged? You brought an extra charger, right? Mom, I'm fine. Please, nothing bad is going to happen. Remember, there won't be anyone to do your laundry, cook your meals, or wake you up when you oversleep. Budget well and you'll have two months. I won't hear anything about a loan for the flight home. It takes the effort to keep a frown from my face. I'm certain that my parents came to see me off only so that they could stay, say they did. I've already sunk the entirety of my savings into this. Now isn't the time for second thoughts. My dad gestures toward the security line and taps his watch twice. Go on. The sooner this is over, the with the better. Oh, oh, come back in one piece, hon. Nothing comes when I think of how to respond, so I only nod. Without another word, my parents walk away. Sh shit, okay. Jeez. Oh, wow, you're upset. Why are you so upset? Why are you so upset? He has to make his own mistakes. Uh, just real quick, I've noticed that, like, a lot of things... I I've seen a lot of things recently that have made me have the thought of... Parents really don't understand the idea of making money or making a living out of playing a game or, or even doing what I'm doing. Which is recording videos on the internet for people to watch. It's just me rambling all the time and for anyone that's struggling with that and struggling with 
should I be on YouTube? Should I even be doing the thing I'm doing? Is it pointless? People make a living out of it, and fortune favors the bold. Like, just just keep trying at it, and um, and, and you're not going to be able to do it alone, but but you got to get up and you got to do it. Um, and, and if you don't love it, don't be doing it. Like, if you don't love what you're doing, then stop doing it, because you'll make it you'll make it to where you'll be happy you'll find a way as long as you're striving towards happiness and that's all that you ever need to do so just a word for anybody who's trying to do youtube right now like me i mean i'm really small too or trying to play games for a living or anything of that nature just just keep trying at it you'll get it like and people will help you don't don't not accept help but but try your hardest and just just keep going and you'll you'll do it one day you'll be happy just keep going at it I love you guys. Anyway, sorry. Um, I tighten my fist, pace quickening. Even though I want to prove everyone's doubt, everyone who's doubted me wrong, doubted me wrong. I'm tired of losing for no one's sake but my own. With the sun long set, overhead signs wash the streets in color. I've wandered so far that a walk back to my apartment would take almost half an hour. A half hour, sorry. My renewed drive to practice my craft drives my, my search for a place to play. It's not long before I see the words I'm looking for. PC bang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The amount of foot traffic suggests it's a pretty popular internet cafe. A sign on the front, win a sign on the front window reads, Golden Zone Fire. Though I've only visited a few times, PC bangs are one of the things that interest me most about Korea when I first got into StarCraft. Dunking, d duking it out for champion status of a neighborhood cafe is old school cool, like the type of western where a sheriff defends his turf against upstarts and outlaws. It's an it's an ideal that's a little bit dated these days. Most StarCraft II competition takes place either online or in broadcast studios. Ugh, sorry. It's an I. Uh, I already read that. I'll admit, I've daydreamed of being born a decade earlier and playing the original esport, Blood War, during its rise alongside the PC Bang. A better time, or so they say online. I trundle up the stairs and pass through the doorway, immediately struck by the size of the place. There has to be at least 80 computers. The crowd is too large for, it, for an ordinary evening. There are more people than there are PCs even. I indulge my curiosity on the first person I see. A dark-haired guy observing a match of C SC2. Oh. Oh. We're still gonna call it 7, because that, it's just easier to say it, but I get it now. StarCraft 2 VN. Got it. From behind someone's shoulder. Excuse me, is there an event going on? The guy turns and looks at me like I'm speaking something other than Korean. After a brief silence, he responds, Are you new or something? How have you not heard of All Out Attack? Yeah, I'm new. Just asking. He hums and glances away for a moment, though he doesn't apologize. He does fill me in. Golden, Golden Zone Fire hosts a StarCraft II tournament called All Out Attack once a month. It's one of the few places you'll find a decent player outside of an online cup or a Star League. Used to be Brood War tournament, actually. I see. Thanks, man. Who are you? Who are you here to cheer for? He only stares in response. The guy walks away with a shake of his head, mumbling something about foreigners. Jeez. The back of his shirt sports the Korean Pro Gamer Association logo. Oh, he must be a Brood War, a Brood War fan. None of the StarCraft teams under K KPGA's regulations compete in anything except the original game Brood War. Understandably, they don't want to fracture a scene they've worked hard to build up. And that's lucky for those of us trying to keep from drowning in a game that already that's already deep with talent. KPGA players train for unbelievable hours. Well, I came here to practice, and now I'm presented with an excellent chance to do so if that guy if what that guy said is true. A few stairs follow me as I walk forward to put my name on the sign up list. I must look like a tourist and in, in over my head. I'm definitely not the first foreigner to go abroad for esports, but most come to South Korea only once, only once they have results or fame. After paying for an hour's worth of PC time at the front desk, 
I settle for a station that has a mouse and a keyboard similar to my setup back home. A few minutes later, I join my opponent's game lobby just in time for the start of the first round. His name isn't familiar, so I check his profile to see he's ranked midway through Master League. Not bad for a casual player. He seems eager enough by the rate of his spamming go 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 in the pregame chat. The game's go go. The game gets underway once I confirm that I'm all, uh, that I'm ready. Workers, minerals, vespin, gas, and and a command center. I start out every match with only these resources at my disposal. It's my job to turn them into something that can defeat my opponent. Generally, that means I need to build structures capable of training units for my army. My build order determines how, how my end of match game plays out. This game, I've opted for a quick Hellion attack. Not only will it offer me a chance to deal some damage to my opponent, but it will also allow me to scout. But it seems I don't have much to worry about. My opponent went for a greedy build, a greedy build order, focusing entirely on his economy instead of his army. Unfortunately for him, the match isn't going to last long enough for the risk to pay off. My Hellions make short work of his single queen and handful of zerglings. With his front line out of the way, I'm free to rush into his mineral line and roast his workers, denying him the resources he needs to muster an army. Facing down a marine reinforcement, it's not long before my zerg op opponent types out the two letters GG. Easy. As soon as the victory screen displays, anxiety floods out of my body. StarCraft is tense. It isn't, an, it isn't an exaggeration to say that there's never a moment to relax until a match is over. Bristling with confidence, I get up to check my next opponent. And it's Excel. I draw my lips in a line. I let my shoulders slouch. Well, that's the end of this tournament run. Excel is one of South Korea's strongest ter Terran players. He's well known for his old school cred balanced playstyle, and friendly banter. He lost in the round of eight of last season's VSL, a respectable finish, if not a high-paying one. From what I remember, Excel is a, is a damn good Brood War player, but he was out of his prime when the sequel hit last year, so it makes sense that he switched. While I'm considering what sort of rush I should do to steal a win, I feel a tap on my shoulder in turn. God, I don't know what voice to give this guy. Huh. So you are a foreigner. God, I can't. That's my voice. That's the one I've been using the whole time. Huh. So you are a foreigner. I find no- Oh. Yeah. And find none other than the man himself standing there. This is a bit surreal, considering I've followed Excel's play for about as long as I've been in Star into StarCraft. Luckily, his nonchalant manner disarms my surprise. Yeah, I think we play next round. I mock a, ter a, a Terran. God dang it. He misses a beat before regaining his smile, likely surprised that I understood and then answered him. Yeah, I saw you won your game. Not bad. It's not, it's not common to see foreigners at all out attack. Are you on a team? I'm not. I'm trying to find one, though. I'm sure you know how that goes. I grin stupidly, which Excel doesn't seem to mind. He pauses to scratch his cheek before responding. Well, good. Don't expect another easy match. You too. Uh, I mean, thanks. God damn it. <laughs> At least he laughed. My stress from before is mostly gone. If I lose, big deal. I'm expected to lose. If I win, I beat Excel. I'm still chewing over which cheese I should perform before finally deciding just to play standard. I shouldn't squander the rare chance to practice against a top player. He and I banter back and forth in the pregame lobby for a bit before the game gets underway. I haven't gone up against I haven't gone up against a player as strong as Excel in a while. There probably wasn't a single person at the VSL qualifier at his level. That only makes a potential victory all the more tantalizing. It's a chance to prove myself that I've got what it takes. Even if I've decided on playing standard, I've still got his decision to make and how to execute my mid-game strategy. This map, well suited for Hellion attack, I will have plenty of room to poke around his expansion since it lacks a choke point. An attack by air might also be a strong option. The distance between our bases is relatively long by land, but will take a banshee less than 5 seconds to travel from mine to his. I'm confident with both styles, it's just a matter of how I want to execute the attack. Let's do the banshees. 
I cut all extraneous unit production to get out a Banshee as soon as possible. The, er the earlier I'm able to hit, the less chance that Excel will have to write his defenses. With my Banshee en route, I clear out a path to his base with a handful of Marines. Denying information to my opponent is important, even if I don't plan to attack from that blind spot. It seems I, I have... It seems to have been the right choice, as his marines are out of position when my banshee arrives at his base, I managed to secure a few worker kills before ordering a retreat. Since I didn't lose my banshee, Excel has to spend minerals on air defense, knowing that I prepared a transition to a full on ground army. This game is going in insanely well, though Excel took his expansion before I did, the damage he took puts puts us on even footing. I follow up with an army of marines, marauders, and dropships, the bread and butter of most Terran players. Since I cleared the space between our bases, he's in dark about the timing of his next attack. Of this next attack. There's a solid chance that I could do an, enough damage here to end the game. But just as I arrive at the outskirts of XL's expansion, one of his dropships uh, uploads a handful of marines in my base. That's going to slow down my ability to reinforce. Whoa, shit! With my focus on the drop in my main, Excel rushed into the army I left outside of his base while I was paying attention. While I wasn't paying attention. He's got a concave formation on me. And just like that, my advantage evaporates. Though I managed to stay in the game for a bit longer, Excel wisely guards his lead by immediately taking a third base. Soon enough, his economic advantage is reflected in the size of his army. After my blunder, Excel's play was airtight. There really wasn't anything for me to do. With a groan, I offer a GG and concede the match. I didn't exactly throw my lead, but I did get seriously outplayed. Fantasizing about how a victory would have left, would have felt, doesn't help me keep my mind off the loss. Knowing that I did my best only helps so much. But not a moment later, Excel turns the corner with a smile and raised eyebrows. Good game! You're actually not bad. I assumed you were here for fun or something. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm here for fun, though. You play really well. I gotta give this guy another voice. Oh, well, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give him, like, a John Wayne, like... Not John Wayne. Whatever. I'm surprised. Most foreigners don't hit timings like that. Good vision control, too. And your scouting was top-notch. I'm gonna be... Oh my god, I'm gonna be so cheesy with him. Oh my god. Nothing like that. I'm staying by myself in an apartment by the VSL Studios. So you came to Korea alone and on your own dime? And you're not just visiting? Uh... Yes? <clears throat> I do my best not to seem awkward about my answer, but any reason to worry disappears when Excel smiles. Aww. Can we get a little, like, cute relationship going with Mach and Excel? It takes some serious guts to move out here like that. I can't think of a single person who's made it out here on their own. A few nearby competitors watch our conversation. Probably not often that Excel gives his attention to a random nobody he crushes early in a bracket. I've got some time before my next game. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Oh, sure. It's gonna be that guy. With a nod, Excel leads me from the PC area to the back of the cafe. We're gonna stop right there and see who the guy is next time. Uh, I hope you loved it. We're gonna figure out these voices sometime and I'm sorry my voice is going out. Um, but I hope you have a lovely day. I love all of you. And uh, as always, Avita's in.